point, you say, talking about the applications that we'll start mm -hmm. to see built on these things. Where is the killer dap? Because at the mm. moment, I'm still hearing, oh, well, CryptoKitties was really successful. I'm sorry, that was a 2017 story. And how much are we going to start to see the, these Ethereum and the likes of the blockchains being Great built question. upon with interesting applications? I mean, the initial use case is still money, right? If, if Bitcoin or whatever the winning cryptocurrency is captures just a quarter of offshore banking and emerging market fiat currency reserves, then it's a $10 trillion asset just by itself. So uh, in, in some respects, that's a big enough opportunity for the near term. And if you look at something like Ethereum, it's much, much younger. The public blockchain has only been around since 2015. That's three years versus 10. There's that much less infrastructure build that's had a chance um, to, well, to happen just, just, just based on sheer time. Well, let's just focus on the Ethereum slash uh, smart contracts mm -hmm. part of the world. Is any of it working or even close to working or getting anywhere close to meaningful adoption? Yes and no. I'd say, I'd say today, very, very few. Um, but what we did see in 2017 in the run-up was Ethereum, uh, Ether itself, became a reserve currency almost for a distributed investment bank. So if you think of Bitcoin as a reserve currency for, for a distributed central bank, the run-up that we saw last year was largely fueled by these ICOs and the billions of dollars that were invested without permission from the SEC or any of their international equivalents. Now, you can argue about the merits of those right. assets that raised money, but Ether itself proved its value. Ethereum proved that it could be this censorship-resistant form of, of uh, capital allocation. The only other one currently, which I already mentioned, is probably Maker, which is a right. fully collateralized stablecoin that's built entirely on the Ethereum blockchain. But we're still light years away from any anything even remotely resembling mainstream adoption for those, even for something like Bitcoin. Well, how do you define light years? Uh, you, you mentioned the idea of a 25% of offshore reserve assets. The uh, Chinese yuan has been now a reserve currency for about three years, and it's got about 3%. Uh, and it is used by people in the uh, in the actual economy. So uh, it, we're, we're I, I think I think we look at the long tail of currencies, national currencies, right? So Argentina, Venezuela, African countries, right? If you if you aggregate the bottom 150 uh, or so currencies, you have to imagine that many of them already use the dollar or something pegged to the dollar um, or pegged to gold. If you have that emerge over time to an M-Pesa like international reserve currency, that could look something like Bitcoin or a derivative of it. All right, Mike, let's get back. To so I think this is really important to understand because cryptocurrency will not be profitable. And a lot of this is speculation until this adoption will come. So if you are going to invest in cryptocurrency or when you should invest in cryptocurrency is when you see this actually occur. And like they've stated, it's light years away. Um, and to figure out when it's closer than light years away, I would highly recommend just educating yourself, reading, researching the news, and subscribe to this channel, and I'll try to keep you guys up to date. But let me know your thoughts on this, and I will talk to you soon.